let's go here so now it's a tree let's maybe press enter and go to five and let's create another one and let's start making our shape so for now let's make it something simple something like this let's stop building it maybe something like that and now oh, that's the wrong one let's resample it it's good to resample for an equal length because these are gonna become polygons later on and now let's mirror it let's mirror it to the other side and I want to actually make this the top part different than the bottom one that's why let's make another curve and let's make a different shape something like for now let's resample let's mirror it too looks fine now let's put down merge node put them together like this but now we have a problem because it's actually not uh, only one geometry you can see that it's four polygons so, so now we just have to clean up our geometry let's put down fuse and polypath with the fuse we just want to snap this thing just enough so we don't see anything fusing with the eye and polypad we don't want anything select just as it is and it says oh we have one polygon now and before there was only there was four so now let's down for down sweep backbone core is going to be our straight line and cross section this so now you can see we have this geometry that's being sweeped but these are very long polygons so we want to resample it also this curve like that as you can see as you can change we can make it bigger let's make it around even so the first part is done so now we can put this all in a box call it like base shape give it a color like green I mean blue so now what we can do now we want to create the actual detail for this railing or whatever we want it to be so let's put down no this is gonna be our output so we can see it easily put it like red put down boolean inside the first but for that we actually want to extrude it to get our thickness so let's put it something like that maybe it's not that much this is gonna be fine so what we can do with the boolean well let's go here let's go up and create in context so now everything we create from the viewport actually going to be in our geo because if we don't 
put it in create in context the box so let's put down another box with the default you can see the box is actually created outside our our object so just one of the facts that I learned recently so always create it in a context when you make all your objects in one layer of object geometry node okay this looks nice you can maybe make something like this maybe even more now it's beveled okay this may be work could work so I can see that we can have to make it a little bit longer let's go back to our curve and make it maybe even two times as long let's take a look yeah that's gonna be a lot better so now let's put it in let's take a look how it looks so okay there's definitely room for improvement let's make it a little bit more rounder and also the box with more resolution and of course it's gonna screw up our poly bevel but that's okay you can just go up and reselect it like that Okay, now normals are not as crazy. That's good. So let's create other something else. Let's put down another box. Hmm. Let's put it like in here. But let's make it maybe like like that. Okay make it across all let's make it a bit more resolution and like this let's bevel them like that let's duplicate them across all of the all of the object I mean, it's gonna be a little redundant, but for demonstration sake, I think it's gonna look or code well. I'll put it inside merge. Okay. Now, maybe in the top we could create some circles. Yeah, let's make them. Let's put down tube. Let's move it maybe in the center. I still have snapping on. Make it uniform scale. And so down duplicate. Let's duplicate them also across this, but Let's use uniform scale, so they are actually getting smaller as we go, like that. And maybe we can also make some cuts in here, just to demonstrate how this looks. So let's put down, let's, let's merge them all in here. I mean, this doesn't look too bad right now. But something. I don't know. Let's make it something in there too. So, let's put down another box. 
maybe in here. Oh, we can make a... Yeah, we can make it like this. Let's make it a bit more resolution. Let's bevel this. Let's merge it. Okay. Now we just want to clean up our workspace. Let's take all booleans and make it inside the box and make it this color. Code like booleans. Like that. So we can visually see what we're doing. So next up we want to voxelize this mesh. Put down voxelize mesh. Labs voxel mesh. I have saved a few presets, it works for me generally, like this, as you can see now, we have nice smooth edges, and if you want them a little bit sharper, we can change the smooth durations, let's put this on zero, you can see now we are getting sharp edges, but you want a little bit smoother as you can see with this big mesh it actually takes a little bit of time to generate so I would suggest just put down voxel mesh on some simple geometry and just play around with these so you can see what they are doing generally speaking you want to always project to original and use always custom resolution because these three low, mid and high are pretty worthless. For our low poly we are going to use this boolean mesh. So let's put down poly reduce. Let's go to polygon count and maybe 3000. So let's take a look. The general shape is fine, but you can see that there are a couple of places where it doesn't look right. So usually you would think we have to wrap this number bigger, but actually a few tricks that I picked up. Because you can see that everything looks fine except for that part. So we can just, before poly reduce, put down divide node. With divide, let's put don't generate slivers, small angles, and maximum edges. Maybe just play around with it, maybe it's five. Let's go back to poly reduce. As you can see, these weird edges that we had are gone, and we are still at 3000 polygons. So don't automatically just go and make the polygon count bigger so this looks fine let's go to other view there are a few offset polygons but this is not nothing too bad as you can see if we want to straighten them out I have to go to 4000 I think for this time it's gonna be fine so after poly reduce let's put down another divide and do the same things, just maybe clean it up a bit. This, let's don't touch this. And maybe let's put down clean. Clean is another mode that you can use. As you can see it actually removes, removes the generate primitive. So let's uncheck that. There shouldn't really be any of these uh, consolidate points that are very close to each other. After pull reduce, there really shouldn't be any of any of these. But if something not right about geometry, you can definitely go and so as a test, let's just 
turn these on, fix our lamps, and right click on this. How many points we have? Egg to one, egg to one. You can see it actually didn't do anything. The numbers are the same, so that's how you know that it's actually not doing anything. So. whatever but this actually you can see that it's actually increased our primitive amount that's interesting oh that's because it's triangulated non planar I let just uncheck that so we had 3000 it shouldn't really matter So now let's put down auto UV. So I think I will be making video about the UVing a little bit more than this. So basically to make a good bake to see if it's gonna bake well, just put it to UV unwrap as a method and the default should be fine for baking to see if it if the geometry is gonna bake well so just leave it that let's put down maps baker so for this I always use nearest surface let's just bake normal map and everything else is at default I just not bake normal because everything else you can actually just bake in a substance painter easily. So let's put this in. So low resolution and now looks like measured high. Let's put down color. Uh, some maybe a little bit darker so we can see what we're doing. So let's press bake, the bake should be super fast, let's take a look at the result, so you can see it's actually baked really nicely, this is completely acceptable except for few weird parts, and what are the things we want to definitely do, we have these weird lines as you can see, it's actually because we have to actually harden the UV seams which are actually kind of rule so put on soften oh it's actually soft and normal now what you want to do is harden UV seams as you can see this node hardened every every edge that we are at the UV so let's just pick this and go back and you can see that this whole thing if I deselect is actually hardened so you always want to harden UV seams that's kind of like a rule of thumb when you bake from the higher resolution mesh so let's rebake it as you can see the weird line is gone and now it looks even better so right now we can go and test out something let's go back to the boolean mesh and go back to our boolean box so let's maybe say we want I don't know make these all the same uh, one doesn't try uh, maybe a little bigger and let's make another actually just duplicate this and let's put it maybe in here let's rotate it so radius scale it down 
and maybe I saw this one detail that weapons have is like a, it's like this. Oh, it's not perfect, but it's gonna work. Let's put down duplicate, duplicate this, and put it in a. Oh, so edit this, copy this, put in here, and merge it. put it on Z1 so we have this kind of detail let's make it so like that now let's just go back to the baking it's gonna take a while and let's rebake as you can see we have rebaked our model with the detail. We are still at 3000 polygons, so at this point, if you are adding more detail, you want to maybe also add more polygons. But this time, actually, baked out fine. And of course, we can also change the shape. So let's go to the main shape. And let's select our curve and maybe make it like this. So our shape is that. So let's take a look how it's boolean. This looks fine. Let's go back to our map baker and bake. So as you can see, we can very easily change the shape of it and baked out. So detail that I just made was kind of a little bit weird because it didn't straight along the normals penetrated the geometry. So I just want to go back and straighten it out so it goes right in like that because it actually can make a little bit of a weird baking because this polygon is going to be thinned out they're going to be very thin if we don't fix it so something like that so let's go back to the mouse baker and rebake them And now this looks fine. So some of the things, so I usually make this flip, why don't check it because defaultly it's gonna generate normal map for OpenGL and we just have to know it because if you want to import this normal map with the substance painter we have to choose the OpenGL option. And actually, let's go to the Substance Paint and, and import this mesh and take a look. Now I have to export this mesh. Let's put down FBX node. I don't really mess with these. The defaults seem to be work fine. Let's go to desktop and let's call it test.fbx and save to disk. Now this wire mesh is in FPX file and also we have to know where we put our normal map. For me it's in a desktop folder render. So let's go to Substance Painter plus Control, Control N select the mesh test and now we have to be make sure it's open gel because it's OpenGL normal map that we just baked and let's add the no map, normal map press OK discard that so this is our mesh let's put it on 2D and 3D and our normal mesh should be here 
and it is. Let's go back to 3D only. It looks good. So let's actually bake some of the maps we need for the smart materials. Now let's put one down, see how it looks. Some of the smart materials with the metal. Let's use this dark steel. So you can see that our normal ups look, looks perfect. It gives a really nice illusion of detail and round edges. And if we turn it off, you can see what the difference makes. Makes actually all the difference. So you can pan around here, put up different materials. So yeah, this looks nice. So to end up this story, I wanted to show what to do if your normal map inside Substance Painter looks weird. So let's do the same thing like before, only now let's select direct text normal map format. And we know we have normal map inside the OpenGL. So let's create. Now let's take a look how it looks here. Select normal map. As you can see, it looks wrong. To fix it inside the Substance Painter, actually, it's pretty easy. You have to put in new fill layer, turn off everything except normal, drag it inside here, select in here that it's an OpenGL normal map, and in here use replace. As you can see, we have fixed our normal map without rebaking it. And we can do the same thing as before. So that's it for this tutorial and see you later.